Wicked, wicked, wicked. You just feel really calm at the fully lengthened. Wicked, wicked, wicked. The longest road is probably consistency over time. Wicked, wicked, wicked. So the way I'm gonna kind of structure this workout today, because a lot of people have been asking me just how I would, like asking me to explain how I would structure a workout and how I would structure a back workout or a chest workout. So I'm just gonna basically take you through. This is a workout I've been doing with a lot of the guys lately. And I've been helping out like Robin. I did it with Quentin the other day, like a variation of it, but it's kind of structuring or like framing your workout around like the first three movements we're gonna do aren't gonna be too aggressive, but they're just gonna be angles and movements and lines of pull that help uh, just get the back opening and just hitting different areas. So the first pull I do will be to kind of get upper mid, just get that like thora thoracic spine, and, like upper back kind of moving. And then I'll go underhand grip and I'll kind of sit up tall and drag into like lower lat, basically to take the mid back out of it. And then I'll go over to the overhead pull and just kind of open up everything and drive that chest up. Like, so I'm going to try and keep the movements to similar things that people might have at their gym if they don't train at this gym, obviously. So I'll kind of explain like what maybe an option would be if I'm using something that's similar to something else you could use and get the same benefit. So but I'm pretty sure everyone has a cable row and an overhead cable pull. So we'll start with the, the basics first. So the first one, a lot of people will set up here and it's fine if you want to do it here. I just like to have a, get a little closer to my, to my cable and have an underhand grip. So this mag grip is upside down. It's supposed to be held the other way, but I keep it like this to keep the wrist flat. And I want to create this pull towards my upper back. So I'm going to pull a little higher on my chest and posture up and just squeeze into upper back. So it's my arms dropping out as far as they can go with my chest postured up and my head pressed back and my body doesn't move that much. There's just a little drop and then a squeeze. So I'm just retracting those shoulders and then sliding my hands deep up through. Notice that like every time I settle, I get my extension and then I squeeze. I don't come here and go and start rocking. I don't care about the momentum and how much, how many reps I get. I just want to open and squeeze. Open. And we'll flip it over. Take an underhand grip because that's the only grip you can take with this handle like this. So basically here, we are going to put our weight in our feet. And we're gonna posture up so my belly's on my quad, my butt's way back, I'm gonna sit up tall. I'm gonna look at the top of the machine, tuck my elbows down and drive into low. So I'm just letting it settle and driving up. up. So my chest and head never drop. I'm just swinging elbows back into low lat. Again, none of these are about the pace, like how fast we can do it or getting everything we're just trying to get everything moving so when i take this down i'm going to lay i'm going to let my arms just dangle and get pulled out so i'm going to lay back push up into my toes so my knees go up into the pads so i'm tall so i just lean back till the tension really alleviates on my shoulders so here they're pens here they're tucked down right so from here i'm going to rock up and i'm just going to squeeze back So I keep this posture with my head up and chest up the entire time and just drive up through. That's it, now we go home. Uh, why'd you only do the one foot up? I uh, just, I really wanna feel like my weight is like forward. I wanna create the shortest distance I can from the cable to here so that I can be as close as I can so I can get that pull right away. I don't wanna start here and then try and pull to upper because I find when I'm, if I'm trying to do an upper pull from here, I either have to stay really hunched over and pull here, and I end up getting too hunched, and I can't maintain my chest. For other people, it might be easy. I'm just, it's the way I'm structured. I just can't do it. If people are going to do this way, would you suggest them to switch feet every time so there's no like, twisting or anything? Uh, I don't, but you could if you start noticing that something's happening like that. A lot of people will be able to do it or might prefer to do it with two feet up and just hang here and posture up and just squeeze back in. But even when I do that, I feel like I'm leaning back too much. 
So I just try to be dead weight, like literally right off the stack pull. So it's pulling me back out. Cause I want that, I want that weight taking me away feeling so that my back opens. So I get that pull around my back, right? That's one of the biggest keys for back is to get that feeling of that back pulling around the spine, right? Coming around the body. So I want to create that hanging weight on my body and then grabbing, grabbing. So I'm almost opening and squeezing, opening and squeezing. Just to reinforce that, like we're trying to get the back to open up. Everything else we do, we're going to kind of lock down a little more and then we're going to move on to lat. But the beginning three is just like, let's just get blood into all areas and see how we feel and decide whether we're going to work out hard today or not. to do here is for a lot of the guys that I'm training they're very big in the shoulder and chest area so they have a hard time like really rolling back through things which is like my style of back training and my style of rowing it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea but it works for me I have a pretty good back so just passing on what I know to people uh, so basically what I want to do is create angles for them that allow them to be lower on their pull and be a little supinated so that they can get past that shoulder issue. So they're not like pulling into themselves all the time. They're able to come up through things and slide and retract those elbows and lift that chest. So we kind of create this seat to be a little higher and kind of start this grip with a soup, not supinated like crazy, but just kind of turned in. So we kind of landmark with our thumb. You can do this with any row machine you guys or girls have at your gym. It could be anything like even a plate loaded that's like handles in front of you and you're just driving. It could be like the Avenger in the other room. It could be any seated row machine, right? It doesn't need to be this one. And you can still create the angle with different handles and different heights of the seat, whatever it might be, right? So we're just doing it here to kind of give that example. But same thing is that we always sit up as our chest is on the pad. And when we sit, we're gonna be, we're almost sitting with bent arm. So we're catching already cracked a bit and we're just sitting here. So we're already hanging on lat with chest up and head pressed back. So my head's not here. My head's pressed back to keep my back engaged so that I'm just swinging in. I'm just sliding those arms and pulling up through. So this seat could even be higher for me. On the next one, I'll put it up. But just dragging in low, keeping those eyes up, put the weight down, swing it in. Make sure you get that extension where you're, I almost like, I want to be here, to be honest. I want to be higher than this. So I feel like I'm reaching down here. So when I go to break, it's my elbow sliding back into here. So I'm not pulling straight. I'm lifting up and dragging up almost like an underhanded, underhanded barbell row. If I was to take off barbell rows and pull here, it's the same thing here, except now we're chest supported, right? So it's a little easier on us different training to like really hit different areas you don't normally hit is to be able to get yourself in positions that allow you to do so so you have freer movement the tighter you stay in a movement like i've said a thousand times and everyone seems to disagree with me the tighter you stay in a movement the more you lock down stuff the less what you're trying to work can actually work and move because everything else around it is so bound up how could it ever be free enough to move right it's like me holding my my bicep in here and I'm, I'm gonna let it out so slow. I guess my bicep's going out I'm here, right? But I'm necessarily getting more bicep because I'm locked here. I'm tight as shit in my wrist. Instead of just swinging up on my bicep and a natural line, right? So that's other people's bread and butter is like this slow, squeezing, contracting, feeling thing. And that's great if it works for them and it works for you, then you should do that, right? That's not what I do. I'm not here to debate whether mine's better or theirs is better or their style shit, my style is the best. It's nothing to do with that. It's like you have to find what works for you, right? So if what I do works for you, maybe aspects of what I do work for you and maybe aspects of what these other guys do help you, then you can blend it 
and all of a sudden, boom, you have your own style, right? So it's not a matter of competing points of view. Whatever worked for that person worked for that person. Not gonna work for you necessarily. What works for me might not work for you. Hopefully it does, right? The same thing here. So a lot of the times here, I'll start people and get them that underhanded feeling again, leaning back like we just did over there. And I'll rock forward out of here and I'll squeeze hands deep into lat. But another variation you guys could do because people have done it is just slide here. So say elongate it and drive. So I'm gonna squeeze into lat. I'm gonna roll up through. So this arm stays completely lengthened now. This one drives in. So it looks like I'm twisting, but I'm literally lifting chest and dropping elbow in. Just the momentum takes me back, right? So for people that have at, people that have at their gym, they don't have this machine, they just have a regular cable. You can do the same thing we did over there, where there's two prongs or one prong, and you can literally just take individual handles and just lean back and pull. You don't need to have a Watson pull down, right? When people try to engage back and they try and really isolate back, you understand like, yes, we're trying to lock shoulder movement down. So we're not getting this like pull into our ears. So if I'm hanging here and I'm doing these pulls, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lock both shoulders down and then just lean to one side and just pull into me and pull into me and think that because I'm rigid and I'm locked down on my lat that I can move. It's not the case. You're not gonna get maximal contraction that way. You're gonna get more just squeezing on a portion of what you're trying to hit. So it's like, if I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna set up like a lot of guys have been doing lately. It's like, yeah, I'm turned in, but if I'm extended here on this arm, I'm locked out. I wanna create space here. So I want this arm, the shoulder you can see is going up into my ear now. So I'm gonna to tip to the side, I'm gonna overreach and I'm gonna drive. So I'm gonna drop, pop the shoulder up and drop it down, drop. And by doing that, by lifting my chest, my shoulder drops, right? So I drive into lat. I get way more depth and squeeze so I can almost completely hold here and contract than if I was to be here and just pull into myself like the amount of strain that I have to do to hold that weight there. Yes, I'm engaging lat, there's no question about it. But am I getting full range and mobility in my lat and coming through, letting it stretch out, letting it grab again? It's like, I don't know, it depends what you're trying to do, right? So if we're trying to maximally contract and create this massively tense environment, then yeah, you'll get lat because you're on the angle to allow that to happen, right? But I want that lat to open. I want that whole lat to wrap open and then grab back in. I don't wanna just work a portion of it because that's how you get a portion of a back, right? That's why when you stand there, these guys who have back issues and they're, they're tucked in because the back's never done this before. Like it never opens. So if I can do this in my, on my lift, when I stand postured, my back's still open in the sense that like I can see my, my arm and my lat moving independently than my mid back. I don't have to move my whole back, right? There has to be pieces where the back relaxes apart, right? But a lot of people don't get that. It's the same with on this pull. It's like I'm putting my weight into this chest pad. And yes, I'm setting myself where I wanna be. But when I sit down and my shoulders are locked down and I'm locked in my bicep, I'm gonna let my hand out till my shoulder starts to rock out and then I'm gonna throw my shoulder back. So I'm shoulders here and then shoulders rolling back. Rolling, 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 rolling. But if I can't, if I don't get here, I can't get that chest lift. So if I only let to where my shoulder doesn't roll out and my hand doesn't take my back open. So if I only roll to here and I pull again, Yes, I'm on back, but my back never knows the length at which it can open, right? So it doesn't understand that like, there's three more inches there. And if I maintain this chest integrity of this weight here and my chin press back, so my body's moving around my spine because my posterior chain's locked and so my arms are coming around. So now that strain is coming around my back and now I'm pulling back through. I'm not doing this because that will be completely useless, right? My head position is always straight or up or back or a little down, but I'm always shoving my chin back on the pole. So I'm, even if my head's down, I'm lifting chest up to chin, chest up to chin, which isn't moving. I'm not going, 
we're going, it's the integrity of your neck, right? And how you're moving your chest up to, up to neck, up to chin, up to chin. Everyone thinks for some reason it's like, if my chest lifts, my head has to go like that. Or I have to go, it's like, no, my chin can be relaxed, but I can lift my chest up to my chin. They're independent pieces, right? My neck isn't connected to my body. I can move my neck any way I want. I don't have to move my body to do it, right? It's not like operation over here, everything's connected. Some guy said I'm, an, I'm egotistical. Some guy on YouTube. <laughs> I know, that's too bad. It's called, it's called watch another channel. Some of my tattoos I'm not proud of, but they're not, some of my tattoos I'm not proud of, but they're not visible. So keep them covered. Then I'll really get flamed in the fucking comments. <laughs> There's so many trainers out there and there's great trainers. And I give credit to a lot of trainers that I see. I even give trainers credit to trainers and individuals I'm not too fond of, to be honest. But can I deny them as a trainer? No, because they've got stuff to say and they know what they're talking about. So like, it just seems to me like in this industry, there's not a lot of support for one another. And like, yeah, you can have a personal issue with somebody and maybe you don't like them for some thing they did, but you still can respect their accomplishments as a bodybuilder, their accomplishments as a trainer, as a coach, as a diet coach, wherever it might be, right? So you can't knock that, because that's what it is, right? That's business, that's the business side of it. So it's like when I see people like coming out of the woodwork, like at no point in time am I on here saying, does it say Mike Van Wick, expert bodybuilder trainer? There's no expert there. There's no experts actually in the world probably other than guys who've done it and experienced it. And I was not a successful pro. I did a couple of pro shows. I didn't even make it to the second pro show, but I love training. I feel like my, my movement and things I teach people carries over to them and helps them get better. And that's all we're doing here. Like, I'm not here trying to be like, I'm the, I'm the word on bodybuilding and I'm this and I'm that. It's like, it's like I said all the time, like if it helps you, cool. If it doesn't, go watch so-and-so and do whatever man like they hopefully they can help you and then you'll find something wrong with them because there'll be another guy who comes around you oh fucking chris whatever steve he doesn't know shit like this guy's stuff's better because like all that stuff i did before didn't work it's like maybe you're the problem i don't think it's i don't think it's me i don't think it's another trainer i don't think it's whatever like people who knock all these people that are trying to help people like we aren't out here making money off you, right? I'm not out here making money off anybody. I'm just helping people out and that's how this whole, this whole journey started. So it's like, I'm offering help to people now. If it helps you, cool. If it doesn't, there's no gimmick coming, man. I'm not trying to sell you snake oil. You buy a t-shirt. This, this is really all a front for a fashion apparel line. <laughs> not a lot of people have this machine. Very few people have this machine, but the same the same thing can be done with a barbell, I mean with a dumbbell row. So you can just post yourself, imagine this is the rack. Imagine we're just picking up a dumbbell here. We're just creating our momentum with our dumbbell here. I just like to do it off this because it's an easy transition. I don't have to walk across the whole fucking gym to do this super set I'm about to do. So this one we're gonna create, we're gonna kind of lock into lat. I don't wanna create a lot of extension. So I wanna grab on the bottom here and I'm gonna shift my weight back as I pick it up. And I'm gonna, my arm, is, my arm is out here, I'm gonna tuck arm in, so I'm gonna lock shoulder down and chest up. And my weight's in my front hand, I'm gonna drive up. So I'm just gonna rock in this small range here, and drive up through. So when I pull, I don't pop up. I just stay where I am and I break, break elbow and drive chest forward, rock on lat. Just be aware when you guys when you guys do row or dumbbell row or do this or whatever it's a better idea to keep the weight the majority of your weight on the side you're pulling so we want to create this position where this shoulder our off shoulder is offset to our pulling shoulder so i don't want to pull even because i can't get any range i want to drop this shoulder down and create this as my height 
So I'm posted off the shoulder here so that I can lean and let that lat really drop out and swing up. If I'm straight, it won't, it'll just be my upper coming over. So I want to create that angle where I'm reaching down for things and driving up through, right? Same thing here. I pick up here, I put weight on that foot. So I, this other foot is literally just to stabilize me. And I'm tuck my arm in, chest up, and drive. So when I pull, I drive into this foot. So you're, where you displace your weight and your feet will determine how powerful your pull can be, right? So if I'm leaning on my right and driving with my right, I can really drive that shoulder back. Whereas if I was in both feet, or I was just sitting back and my, both my feet are light, and I try and pull, this pulls me up and I can't get here. Whereas if I lean on this right foot and drive, I can swing through, even if my foot's way out there. So all the weights on the right side you're on the side you're pulling so there was a shorter range keeping it like rocking on like the meat of the lat that's a really technical term you'll probably find that in the textbook somewhere the meat of the lat feel free to comment about that one so what i'm going to do here now is this machine is designed for me to be against this pad and rocking off and swinging down right what i want to do is create more length so again the side I'm pulling with, my left, has all my weight. Everything is light over here. Just allowing me to be open more in my chest. So this shoulder's behind me. So I'm able to create more length in my, in my let out than if I was here. The difference in length is massive, right? So I'm using this as my post-off pad now. And I'm literally looking up and swinging down in, rocking. So it can't be a fast pull, it can't be this. It has to be a slow drag and I'm pushing my chin back, lifting my chest at the same time. So I push back and drive. So I'm just pushing off here to keep my chest up, pull my chin back, drive my chest up. I'm letting out from lat, so low, grab. Grab. So it's gonna be full length, right? Yeah, we can even, I'll show you right after on that. A lot of gyms have that machine. I just like this one because it's, it creates a little more length and it doesn't pitch you forward like that one does that we'll show you. So again, we open here, we drop this shoulder, and we lock into here and chest up. So that wherever my eyes go, my body's gonna go. So if I look up, I'm gonna stay up. If I look down, I'm gonna keep pulling down, right? So if I keep my eyes up and I cut my finger, I pull my chin back. So I'm reaching, driving. So on the pull, you can turn into the pull a bit because we're pulling everything back, and it'll almost straighten you out. So you're dropping and sliding. We need to get that length. When you get there, don't be in a rush. Let it settle, drive. So let that momentum stop and then grab it back. People just hate us right now. We have so many. <laughs> Everyone's watching is like, oh fuck. Like what lat pull down do I use? <laughs> like such spoiled brats here. Oh, you could use this old thing. No, but I mean, here it's the same thing as like, I can create the length here and I can be opened up just as much. It's just that I'm kind of, I'm a little closer to that stopping point, right? So if I really get moving on this with a heavy weight and I rock up, I might clank a bit and drive, but you can do the same thing. It's more of a straighter line up, whereas that one's pulling me forward. That, this one's pulling my arm straight up. The other one's pulling my, pulling my arm on this angle. So it's letting out from, it's more of an underneath feeling. This is more straight up, straight back. But it's the same thing. You just find your angle, whatever it is you're trying to do with. So I'm, I'm trying to get upper, upper mid, mid lat. I'm gonna stay a little straighter. I'm just gonna rock on it, up through. And this hand position is important. So if I'm pressed to it, I have a hook grip and I'm pressing my palm underneath the handle, I'm more likely to roll my shoulder back and chest up because I can't, I can't keep pulling on this line without impinging shoulder. So I have to get shoulder to go back to drop down, right? Whereas you see a lot of guys come here and they hook this and they just want to pull this. They just pull it. That's not it, man. There has to be palm pressure pushing up into the handle and driving up as we pull. So I'm pushing against that handle and lifting my chest up. So I'm pushing my palm in as I grab and I'm pulling down in. So I'm creating my own tension. 
as opposed to thinking that the weight's gonna create it, right? Stan Efferding is fucking great. He's the reason why he got me back into, when I first got back into bodybuilding after I took a break, the first person that like, is the thing that annoyed me most about bodybuilding was bodybuilding diets. And like, having to think of eating like, the bullshit over and over again. And then I found, I don't even know how I stumbled across it, but I was like watching Stan Efferding's video popped up and it was like, one of his like, um, I forget what he calls him, but he goes on walks and he talks while he walks, like rhino rants or I don't know what the fuck it is. But it's like, it was like his 10 minute rant thing because he did 10 minute walks, two 10 minute walks a day or three 10 minute walks a day. And he, then I looked up his like vertical diet and that got me back into bodybuilding. Like it literally, that's how I eat. I don't eat like, I don't eat like these like typical bodybuilders. I don't eat, I barely eat chicken ever. Sometimes I will. I just stick to bison and elk, green ground beef. I just stick to red meat and the spinach and all that, and the orange juice, I'm all there for that. Especially the orange juice. All right, so this one, people don't have this in their, machine, in their gym a lot of time, but they might have old school versions of overhead pull downs that spread apart like this one, or even that Panada over there is another style. There's various, like there's all kinds of different ones you guys have seen where it's just like this spreading. They're all the same idea. This is just panada, right? So a good idea, a good cue for this is when you're standing here already, I wanna, I'm thinking about when I'm pulling these, I'm not trying to pull them down to me. I'm not trying to pull in a V to me. I'm trying to spread apart. So I'm literally trying to pull around my body and around back out. So I'm trying to get my lat to squeeze in and my lat to open out. So if you think that you're dragging, coming around elbow and pulling around elbow, that's the path that this is supposed to move on. So you're not supposed to lean back like some people do and they just pull here. Because they're trying to pull down and this thing's moving out. So there's no contraction, right? You have to get that drifting out feeling to be able to squeeze the back around, right? So the best way to do that is to stand here and I'm gonna pull this down and lock into my lat here. So I just arch and squeeze down my shoulder blades and lock my lat in. So I sit here and frame to about locked on here like I would be in a front double. And I'm gonna rock out of that with my lats and then drive down. So from here, I'm spreading hands apart and driving chest up through. So I'm gonna stay arched like I would be in my rear double. I'm gonna keep that arched feeling once I find it and I'm just gonna rock on it. So my arms are just gonna move now and I'm gonna keep that arch feeling in my back till it's almost cramping. So I'm gonna pull apart and then drive my elbows down like I'm about to hit a rear double. So you getting up here and reaching back down around is not what we want. We wanna catch on, the, on that rolled under feeling and then let out from it. That will give you a lot of dexterity in your, in your rear double too, because a lot of guys hit rear doubles and they They'll either throw back here, or they'll throw back here, and they'll roll up through, and they'll roll up through their lat, right? So they're, they're coming here and they'll roll up through. Or some guys sit here and they come down and up through, right? But it'll just teach you that kind of where that cradle is to be able to rock in there. So if even though I'm here, I can change my angle or I can turn my elbow forward in and out, whatever it is, right? Because you're locked down in that spot. And you don't need a lot of weight. like. This is just something I would say is like a finisher move because the heavier it gets, the harder it's going to be to spread that weight apart. So that kind of concludes like a basic workout I would do. Uh, obviously, I'm just doing what I'm doing to feel things. I'm not really trying to like go crazy with the weight. I'm not trying to push myself to that level. But it's like if I'm training these other guys who are like mid show prep or like off season, going into shows, trying to put on massive amounts of muscle, trying to really get the stress up and get them building. Then yeah, we're gonna push the weights, but we're still gonna be within reason, right? So we still wanna be able to contract fully. We wanna be able to move it properly, right? We still would do that na that natural little warm up where we're upper and then kind of low and then kind of opening from above, getting all angles of the back to open up. And then we get into like the prime row probably would have been getting a little heavier for a lot of other guys or you guys out there that would kind of make that the meat of your workout because we kind of we got a lot of blood in the on that tricep to start 
And then we move to the prime row or any type of seated, seated row. It could be anything like these Atlantis or Life Fitness ones right here, or even this Avenger. And that's where we kind of do the, the bulk of our work. So probably get up to three or four plates with different guys on that, on that prime row. And then use the Watson, the hanging Watson with the individual arm. It's kind of like a burnout. So we do this heavy, heavy kind of set of this rose underhand. We're moving a load and then we go over there and we kind of open things up again and we squeeze into that like outer, outer edge of the lat. So we're just promoting that back staying open. Because they don't want to start doing rows and then start getting this like pinched in feeling because traps are getting too engaged and things are getting locked down. So then when we slid over here, it's like we've done a lot of whole back work and moving around like the whole back both handed and all that stuff. So everything went to like one arm. So now we're doing the, the M torture row or dumbbell row for you guys, it doesn't matter. And we're creating, a, we're creating a shorter distance here and we're just rocking one arm on lat. And then we go to the pull down, the Panado or this one here. Like a lot of people will have this uh, Nautilus pull in their, in their gym. So we just create it and then we, so we do the short range with the dumbbell or the machine. And then we create this really long length again and drive down into like, almost trying to squeeze lat down into like our spine. We're trying to put that, that hand in our pocket, right? So we're trying to let out from there, drop into there. So shoulder activity is minimalized. It's just this launching and rolling thing. But we're not gonna swing arm. We're here, we break elbow and we swing hand down, right? So that we break elbow back and squeeze lat. A lot of people don't understand that it's not like where my hand ends up is where my lat grabs because if I'm just not going to break my arm and I'm going to swing my hand down, as you can see, this happens. So if I don't break my elbow and I can't get my chest to clear and throw that shoulder back, it's just going to be that. And there's even less range. So I have to crack and roll, right? So that's just kind of how I would structure a workout, a back workout. Obviously for, there's guys that I train and people out there, you guys like to do deadlifts, you like to do rack pulls. I would, I would argue that maybe whatever your preference is, you could start with that maybe to like, in, because you're kind of engaging everything and getting everything firing, or you could wait to the end and maybe sacrifice some power in those lifts, but have crazy activation because you already got so much blood in the back, right? So it would just be kind of be up to your preference. There's no one way to do things. And when people write me and they write other trainers I see online, they ask them like, how should I do this? Or I do this, should I do this? It's like, I don't know, man. Like, you, you need to understand that every day you come to the gym is a, is a day for you to get better, and it's a day for you to try something new. Like, you don't have to, like, every day trying a new, five new exercises, but if, like, one day you're like, hey, I'm gonna, usually I, I'm doing legs, usually I warm up and I go right to hacks. Well, today I'm gonna fucking warm up, I'm gonna go to leg press, I'm gonna go to the fucking barbell squat, and then I'm gonna go to hack. So like, yeah, my hacks might not be as high, but maybe I'll get more out of them because I'm able to get more depth and I'm pumped when I already get there, right? So that's what I'm saying. There's, there's no one right way to do things, guys and girls. Like the right way to do things is how you do it. It's not how I do it. So if I can help you with techniques or other people can help you with ideas and structure here and there, then do that. And if it doesn't work for you, try something else. And also, but also give that something a time to actually work. Don't try it once and never try it again, right? So it's just a matter of like deprogramming yourself from thinking that like this whole, whole idea in this fitness industry is like there's all these people like looking, like changing their periscope view of like where they're looking for information. They need to understand like you just need to like take this information in because there's so much and then do what you feel and work with it. Maybe take suggestions from this person, that person. But don't understand that no one's gonna give you the definitive answer of what works for you because they are not you. I'm not you, you're not me. So just deprogram yourself, think for yourself.